Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so we're going to be talking about our Atlantic disturbance. So from the time I made my previous video, the chance has risen for it to develop into a tropical cyclone. And we also have a disturbance over in the EPAC that we will briefly mention as well, guys. And so before I go into details... Okay, so let us kickstart things with our Atlantic disturbance, of course. So first off, let's take a look at the view of the Atlantic. And so there we have it being off the southeastern coast of the U.S., just off Florida and a bit to the southeast of Georgia. And so guys, that system is really going to be lingering in that region throughout most of this weekend. And that is where we could have some development taking place. And so we have seen an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity this morning. And now it's looking a bit more uh, defined. So it is possible that we could have it developing into a tropical cyclone but as for the rest of the Atlantic we don't have much going on not much showing thunderstorm activity again that is all due to the Saharan dust and so we're going to be taking a look at the Saharan dust map later down in this video all right guys so going to the National Hurricane Center's five-day outlook we're seeing here that our disturbance not yet designated as an invest is given a 30% chance to develop through both 48 hours and five days so the chance is this low because conditions are marginally conductive so it is possible for it to develop but again that is not guaranteed because it is not in a highly favorable region where we would see the chance spike in where it is definitely likely that we will have development taking place guys and so now let us go on to the wind shear map and see how favorable conditions are in terms of the wind shear uh, for our disturbance and so we're seeing here on um, the different colors mean different shear intensity so we have the reds meaning on favorable shear that is shear that is really strong uh this is what rip up our tropical cyclones and then we have the yellows being neutral meaning they won't impact our tropical cyclones too much and then the greens meaning favorable so that means that environmental conditions in terms of the wind shear are conducive for us to have development taking place and so taking a look off the southeastern u.s where we have that disturbance we see that it is not in a very favorable region uh just off the southeastern edge of it we have some unfavorable shear as well as the northern section and we have some neutral shear surrounding it as well so it is kind of pocketed in a region that is not so likely for development so the chance is relatively low at this time but again it still has that potential to get in shape uh, gain some strength and potentially become our next tropical cyclone and if it does it will acquire the name fred which is the next name to be used and so now let us go on to the saharan earlier map and so we're seeing here that we have a lot of saharan dust across the main development regions especially just off africa coming westward and so the more you see those oranges go into those reds and that pink shade a lot of dust the dust is very very dense in those regions and so the dust is spreading westward uh, across the Caribbean and even making its way into the Gulf as well so if you're along Gulf Coast states you might see some hazy skies that might just be the Saharan dust but it's mainly the Caribbean that's feeling impacts from this I can say that over the last few days here in Jamaica we've been having the effects of the Saharan dust no rainfall and it's quite hot and windy as well due to high pressure system but it was mainly very hot but this morning is looking a bit better but we're having that other dense pocket of dust that's going to be moving across so hazy conditions are expected to return and this is also what is suppressing our tropical cyclones because this induces a dry environment and tropical cyclones need warmth and moisture so all that moisture won't be there to help our tropical cyclones to develop and so guys this year uh this time around in july is relatively quieter than last year last year there were five named storms in july and I believe two hurricanes Hannah and East Hyas. well for this year we just had Hurricane Elsa so this July is relatively quiet compared to last year but again once that Saharan dust moves out and conditions are a lot more favorable then we can expect things to spike in terms of tropical activity especially as we're going to be heading down into August and September and so guys now let us take a look at our EPAC disturbance so at this time this disturbance is given a 40% chance to develop through the next five days and so if the, we have a development taking place off this tropical system it will acquire the name Hilda fortunately as of right now it doesn't seem as though it will be a threat to land so that is the fortunate news uh, with this tropical disturbance guys and so guys that is really it for this updated video on the tropics so it is possible that we could have development taking place just off the southeastern coast of the US 
US and it could really linger there so there is a possibility that it could move into these states and there's also the possibility of it just moving out to sea so we really have to watch it because it is going to be moving erratic and no set track is there for it as yet and so guys if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can just remember to always be weather wise and of course i will keep you updated as time goes by